Welcome to the Orientation Podcast Series from the University of Ottawa Faculty of Law Common Law Section. My name is Professor Kyle Kirkup, and I'm the English Common Law Orientation Coordinator and co-host of this podcast. You will also hear on this podcast channel co-host and French Common Law Orientation Coordinator, Professor Anne Lévesque. We are both very excited to welcome you to the University of Ottawa Faculty of Law Common Law Section. Each week, we will release episodes of professors at the Faculty of Law. Our goal is to introduce you to our law school community and to get you excited about the possibilities of your legal education. We will also have conversations on this podcast in both English and French. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube with closed captioning, or wherever you are listening to this episode right now. On today's episode, we talk about how to make the most of your time at the University of Ottawa Faculty of Law. Cerise Ross and Christina Emberley, both 2019 graduates at the JD English program, will join us to talk about first year law school and beyond, along with what the future holds for them in the legal profession. Cerise Ross graduated from U Ottawa twice, first in 2015 with a Bachelor's in International Economics and Development, and again from the Faculty of Law in 2019, before starting her career as an employment lawyer in Toronto at Mathers, McHenry & Co. She articled in Labour and Employment Law with the Ministry of the Attorney General's Treasury Board Secretariat. During law school, she was the student representative on the Faculty's Equity Committee, VP Academic of the Black Law Student Association, Editor-in-Chief, Administration of the Ottawa Law Review, and Editor-in-Chief of Interalia, the Common Law Faculty's student newspaper. For fun, Cerise likes to do nothing, preferably on a beach. But when the borders are closed and the world is in chaos, she'll happily settle for a bike ride and a podcast. Christina Emberley graduated from the English Common Law Program in 2019 and articled at Denton's LLP in Toronto. During her time at UOttawa, she was editor-in-chief of English articles for the Ottawa Law Review, a peer mentor, and a student intern with the Ticket Defense Program. Before law school, she completed a BA in political science at McEwen University in Edmonton, Alberta. She was called to the Bar of Ontario this past June and is currently clerking the Court of Appeal for Ontario. So Christina and Cerise, welcome to the podcast. So you are both recent graduates of the program and I'm sure you'll have lots of wisdom for our incoming law students. So let's start with you Cerise. Why did you decide to study law school at the University of Ottawa? Um, well, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for having me and Christina, nice to see you. Um, <laughs> Why did I choose the University of Ottawa? I think for a couple reasons. First, Ottawa is a fantastic city to study in. It has uh, that nice small town vibe, but it, you know it's big enough that you can get lost in it. Um, and because of that, the faculty were really um, a collection of people who I thought were really interesting. I also loved the fact that U Ottawa had um, the distinctions that you could do with your degree. And although it's not something I chose to do, it's something that I thought I might be interested in. Um, it's also a bilingual program and as a bilingual person, it was, you know, another way um, to be attracted. I actually took a bilingual course during my degree, which I wouldn't do again, but I've done it. So I can say that's, that's happened. Um, and last but not least, um, Uottawa's commitment to um, uh, equity and um, inclusion and diversity in its teaching and its courses was really um, explicit. I found it quite explicit on the website. And having spoken to other people who had attended the university, I thought it would be a place um, where my introduction to the law, my introduction to the legal profession um, would get off on the, the best foot possible. And that is why I went to University of Ottawa. 
And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you did. It was, it was great to work with you. Christina, what about you? Um, so hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Kirkup, for having us here. Um, I did not take as sophisticated an approach as Saris did, but uh, a big thing for me was that I wanted to do, um, and originally was supposed to do, a dual program. So I was going to do the JD and then the Master's at Carleton in International Relations. Um, I'll, ultimately, I did end up dropping the master's, which um, was the right choice for me, but that was a big pull for me to go to U Ottawa. Um, and then in terms of the law school itself, um, the big stuff for me was the opportunities, <clears throat> excuse me, for experiential learning. So I wanted the opportunity to try my hand at different things outside of a traditional classroom setting. Um, the Ottawa Law Review was also a really big thing. I knew I wanted to do a law review, so having that there. Um, and then, yeah, like there's just so much opportunity at U Ottawa. Like there's, like I said, there's the Ottawa Law Review, we've got the clinic, um, there's the Refugee Hub, there's CIPIC. Uh, there's just so many things that you can do outside of just a lecture class. Um, and that's, that was a really big draw for me. Um, and another one was the student proposed internships. Um, I love that, that you can kind of have creative freedom to figure it out for yourself and find um, a workplace that fits really well for you. And I actually had the opportunity to go to Australia and do one. So I spent a January term in Brisbane, Australia, um, working at essentially a legal aid clinic there. Um, so that was a really big thing that I took advantage of and um, yeah, loved it. So let's go back to 2016. That I remember this time very fondly because it was actually my first day on the job as well. I started as a new professor in September of 2016. So it was obviously new for all of us. Uh, and so I wonder if, if, Christine, if you could help paint the scene, what were the first few weeks of first year law school like for you? Yeah, um, they were really exciting, obviously. Um, I'm not from, so I'm from Alberta, um, had never been to Ottawa before, so just that was exciting. But um, yeah, getting there and kind of realizing your dream, it had been my dream for a long time to go to law school. Um, so it was really, really exciting to just meet new people and um, really kind of get off on that legal career journey. Um, but, you know, if I'm being totally honest, it was also, it was really intimidating and really overwhelming, especially the first couple weeks. Um, I am a first generation student um, and first lawyer in my family. And like I said, I'm not from Ontario, so I had never heard of Bay Street. I had never heard of all these like big firms. And you get to law school and like, you're in orientation and like that's kind of what everybody's talking about and I felt really unprepared for all of that um and I think too it's hard you know you you come from kind of being the top of your class wherever it is that you where you started and then you're amongst people who are so accomplished um, and so driven and so it was hard for me to not kind of be like oh you know am I cut out for this is this the right thing for me um so I found that to be a bit intimidating. Um, and I also remember I was thinking about it and um, I find it funny that this is what stuck out in my head, but you will get so many emails in those first couple weeks of law school. And I remember that being so overwhelming. Um, and so I, at one point, I think just stopped checking my emails and I would uh, strongly advise everybody to not do that. Um, read dictum, read it top to bottom because there's so much information in there that I, I ended up missing a couple things. Um, so yeah, so it is, it's a lot. I mean, your schedule is just packed. It's a, it's a steep learning curve, but um, everybody's kind of on the same playing field and uh, there's so much support and community there that I think that makes it a lot easier. Um, and I think too, and it's, it's funny, um, Professor, that you mentioned that that was kind of your first you know you were starting off then as well and so um professor kirkup was actually my small group prof so my very first law class was with him and i remember that class and we did the carter and canada case and i think i actually sent you an email like a big keener um after class and i just remember thinking to myself like oh, this is, I made the right choice. Like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is where I'm supposed to be doing it. And so the first week or so when you're in orientation before classes start, 
all of that kind of worry and um, intimidation like really went away once I actually started um, started studying. That's great. Yeah, I remember that email. I have it saved uh, in just a folder of nice things from students over the years. So, Cerise, I wonder if you could help us paint the the scene as well. What was those those first few weeks? You're in photo hall. You're in law school. What does that look like for you? Um, well, Christina did a great job. I, I really don't know if there's there's much to add. I think she captured a lot of the emotion that. Um, are fueling all those like nervous hellos and introductions you make with all your classmates and and stuff. But for me, it was slightly different because I had attended U Ottawa for my undergrad, and so um, Photo Hall is a is a building I had walked by and dreamed of being a part of, and was super excited to finally to finally have gotten there and to be a part of the law school community. But I too felt. Um, so so overwhelmed by just um the sheer newness of it all the number of emails we got the number of people we met um and i remember being physically exhausted at the end of every day um trying to remember people's names you know answering questions about where you would come from and who you are and and what you want to do and um and so um i don't quite have as many vivid memories of, you know, really fantastic classes. I think I spent actually the first couple of weeks of law school just trying to keep my head above water. Um, and in doing that, I ended up talking to a lot of different people um, and really searching for people who I thought were either feeling the same way or were willing to be honest about feeling the same way, um, which can be really hard in law school because like Christina said, um, people are quite um, accomplished and um, everyone is very much used to being like the creme de la creme of wherever they've come from. And so it can be quite hard to be that brutally um, vulnerable. But um, with time, I was able to find some people who also admitted that this is a lot. Um, and in doing that, um, I was able to then kind of find my footing. Um, but I can't say that I felt at home in the first couple of weeks. I, I remember feeling very lost um, in almost every single one of my classes um, and having some real second thoughts as to whether I had made the right choice if I was, you know, in the similar vein of Christina, whether it was something that I was really um, meant to do. Um, and so with that said, um, when I think back of first year, I think, you know, what they say is true. It's, it's a very scary time, um, but it's also something that I spent and I think we all spend a lot of years working towards and so nothing can really take away from that feeling of accomplishment when you walk through the doors um, and that's the feeling that I try to and in those moments where I was you know on the, the jittering edge I tried to hold on to the most. And if you could go back to 2016 uh, Cerise do you think there's any advice that you might be able to give that first year law school self whether in terms of how to study or as you say how to meet your your people um, it sounds like that is really important for a lot of students and it's figuring out how to do that. So any advice now on the other side of articling and, and, and that kind of thing? Um, yeah, I, a couple things. Um, as Christina pointed out, I'm quite systematic in the way I kind of think of these things. And so um, in terms of how to study, I very quickly recognize that um, and I knew this from my undergrad that I am a group study type of person. I love um, hearing other people talk about these ideas, um, having those debates that happen in a study group and really working through the material um, with people who you know, aren't judgy and are willing to kind of get into the weeds with you. And so I quickly tried to find people who also studied like that. And I made friends with people who didn't. Um, but you know, when it came to like dividing ourselves in the library, I would go to a study room with people who were willing to have those like long hour sessions and other friends really went and, and studied quietly on their own. Um, so in terms of community, um, friends ended up being kind of divided into people you studied with and people you got along with generally in class and other people who just shared your interest who I ended up meeting in different clubs like the Law Review, which is not a club. <laughs> um, and, and other things that I signed my name um, up for. Uh, and, and through all those things, I was then, I think, able to find my footing and really feel um, more secure in the choice that I'd made. Christina, anything that you would add advice for your first year self in terms of studying or just getting your feet wet in first year law school? Yeah, um, I agree with 
pretty much everything that Cerise said. Um, I think a big takeaway for me was that whatever whatever got you to law school will get you through law school. Um, you will hear a lot of people who will tell you that there's one way to do something. Um, and I, I don't think that's true. Uh, you know, if you like to handwrite your notes um, and study alone, that and that's worked for you, that's probably going to work for you most of the time um, in law school as well. Um, and I think, you know, just be flexible with yourself and be kind to yourself. It's such a big learning curve. And sometimes the methods that you have are going to work, sometimes they're not, and you just figure it out as you go. Um, in terms of studying, I think a big, a big thing that um, comes up kind of a lot is whether or not to use other people's summaries. Mm. Um, and I think it's important, and I think other people's summaries can be really helpful, and I've used them for like, I mean, with permission, obviously, um, for structuring my own summaries. But I think in terms of studying to learn the material, the absolute best thing that you can do for yourself is to make your own summaries. Um, because that's, you are going to engage with the material. Um, and I found, I always made my own summaries. Um, and I would find, so a few, like maybe two weeks before the exam, I would start actually making my summary and leave a couple days at the end for studying. And I would find that I didn't even really need, um, I mean, my, my, some of my grades would suggest otherwise, but I, I felt like I didn't really need those extra days because I just knew the material really well. Um, so I think that's really important. And you know, if you are gonna use someone else's summary to make sure you check it because um, my first year torts class after the midterm, the prof said, you know, I know who is using some old summary because the law is bad. Um, and you're citing cases that have been bad for about five years. Um, so just, you know, make sure that what you're, that what you're using is at least accurate. But yeah, I think that's kind of the big thing. Christina, I totally disagree. <laughs> Great. Go for it, Cerise. I, I love this. I'm one of those people who relied heavily on summaries that I got with permission. Um, and I'm not, I did not leave the summary and just follow it as, you know, like a, a text of life. I would sit in class and have the summary in front of me and I would actually edit it as I went along. I would take what the professor was saying and make comments. And if I noticed there was something really off about the commentary, I would highlight it in red and knew that that was something that I shouldn't rely on. But I relied on the structure and a lot of the details that previous students had put into their summaries. And I built off of it and I found for myself, um, I was really slow at reading and taking notes. It just was not a skill I ever mastered um, in law school. And so having this kind of rubric to follow along and that I could edit along the way uh, really worked for me. That said, I did have to spend more time at the end really going through it, going through it rather, um, and reviewing it in my study groups. But um, I couldn't have, I don't know where I would have found the time to, to make my own summary from scratch. And Christina is a master of her own time. I, I've seen it firsthand. She is impeccably like organized. Um, but for, for myself, especially, I think also I took on a lot of other extracurricular things that I wanted to be involved in that I found relying on multiple summaries and kind of meshing them into my own was the best strategy. And I love it too, because I've heard from students both uh, the Cerise account and the Christina account of summaries. And I think, again, it's it's listening to your gut. If you feel like it's it's useful, use it. If it's not, uh, switch it up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, totally agree. Okay, so let's shift gears a little bit to talk about uh, ways, because both of you, I think, are such examples of excellence in getting involved in the law school community. So maybe, Christina, we'll start with you. How did you decide to get involved with various activities during your time at, at U Ottawa, because sometimes what I hear from students as well, like, it's so intense, it's so busy, like, I'm just trying to get through my readings, like, I don't have time to get involved, I'll get involved in projects that matter to me down the road. So how did you do it? And how did you manage your time? Yeah, so um, I knew in terms of like, how I decided what I wanted to get involved in, I knew that I wanted to do 
a law review before I started law school. That was kind of the only thing that I knew. Um, and it's because I have a journalism background and I really like editing. So I knew that that was something I would be interested in. Um, and so I did that all throughout. I started as an assistant editor um, in first year and then carried that right through to the end. Um, and yeah, so that was just something that I pursued out of interest. Um, and then I also did the ticket defense program, which is a program at the school that um, where you you're a student intern and you represent street involved clients at provincial court. So you'll go fight just provincial offenses. Um, and I again, that was a, partially that was an interest thing for me because I volunteered with street involved folks um, in Alberta for a few years and loved it and I really missed that. Um, and I also really wanted to work on my advocacy skills. That was something that I was and still am a bit self-conscious about. Um, so that was a really good way to kind of cut my teeth and um, and learn those skills. Um, and, then I, and I also did, I was a peer mentor as well. Um, I did that in second year and I was inspired to do that because I was very fortunate to have a great mentor in first year. And I think one thing that most, if not all people I think agree on is that the U Ottawa law community is so supportive. Uh, I didn't feel like it was overly competitive, like people were really supportive of each other and I really wanted to give back to that. Um, and so I think there's, it's, it's kind of a blessing and a curse that there's so much opportunity at U Ottawa because it can be really overwhelming. But because there's so many things, you can find something that works for you. So if you only have, you know, a little bit of time, you can get involved in a club or a society or something. Um, you know, first year for Law Review is not super demanding. Um, little plug for, for Law Review there. But just find something I think that you're interested in or that builds on a skill that you really want to work on. Um, you've got endless opportunities. And in terms of time management, um, I actually think if it, like, if I could go back, I think I would have been involved in more stuff because I think when you, without overextending yourself, I think when you are busy, you become more efficient. Um, and I think you feel more fulfilled, especially when you're doing things that you find interesting and that you care about. So I think you will figure it out. Um, you will find ways to make everything work. Um, and, you know, just have a good calendar system. Um, and the, the good thing too with your courses is that you generally know when everything is due right when you get the syllabus. So you can plan things ahead. And um, yeah, and I think if you're, if you're involved in stuff that really lights you up, it's not going to be hard for you to find the time to do that. And so, Reese, what about you? I know you were so involved in the law school community. And uh, how, did, how did you do it? And how did you manage your time? Um, well, I actually, like, I have to echo so much of what Christina said. But um, first and foremost, I was actually quite, I thought, reserved um, in my first year. Um, and of course, I came from a background in an undergrad where I had, you know, taken on a lot of things and I was sure I could handle it all, but I, I knew that law school would be more challenging. And so I had done a lot of research before school started and kind of made a short list of things that I would maybe take on um, and then would decide kind of on the go. And I only ended up taking on the law review um, and the Nelligan moot. Um, in my first year, those were my two primary things. And I, and I made those choices strategically. Um, but I think that just like what Christina said, um, I, I did lose a little bit of the, the, the kind of ability to kind of really time manage and be really passionate about what I was doing outside of the classroom, which, which may have had an effect on my overall first year experience. So I chose to do the Nelligan because it was easy. It was an amazing way to get a mooting, um, mooting experience at U Ottawa. U Ottawa is what, like a world renowned place to learn how to be an oral advocate. Um, and it's something that I was really interested in before, before school. Um, and it's really easy to sign up. I think it was a draw that we got into. Um, and I got there within the first semester and it was, you know, a complete disaster. So <laughs> that's a story for another day, but it was nonetheless a fantastic experience. Um, and it's something that 
we, my partner and I were able to kind of carve out time to dedicate to. Um, and it's was one of, you know, a fantastic experience that I had that year. The law review, again, as Christina said, was something I knew I wanted to do um, quite early on, mostly because, not because I had a real passion for editing, um, but I thought it would look great on on a resume. Um, and I was already thinking ahead of how can I build these kind of legal experiences into my resume um, coming from a background of economics that doesn't always, that I didn't think would translate well um, in the legal profession. And so those were the two primary things that I, I, I actively took on in order to kind of start that those keener gears going and and the third thing that i did which was more for a sense of community is i joined the black law student association um, and i did that because um you auto is a huge school it's a huge class that you enter with and it can be challenging to to find people that you can connect with and it was just another way to to make friends and meet colleagues and to to get mentorship from upper year students who had obviously been at the school for a year or two before and could pass down some wisdom. Great. So let's let's shift gears a little bit to talk about uh, course selection for us. So at this point, our students will, for the most part, have picked their small group professors. So whether that's torts, pubcon, or criminal law, and they'll also have picked their thematic for first year. The rest of the the courses are pretty much set in the first year program, but before our students know what they're going to be into second and third year. So do you have any advice on what students might do to help select the best courses for them? Maybe Christina, uh, we could start with, with you. Yeah, so um, I think if you know what areas of law that you're interested in coming out of first year, which some people are and some people don't know. Um, I think just follow, <clears throat> follow what you're interested in. Um, talk to upper year students. Um, there are Facebook groups and people are always asking questions about courses and stuff there. Um, I think, yeah, if, if you just kind of follow what you're interested in, generally you're going to do great. I also think too it's important, this is something that I did anyway, I like a particular teaching style. Um, so I tried to find professors who taught in that style. Um, I like smaller classes. I like um, more of kind of a seminar style or Socratic method as opposed to just kind of sitting and, and lecturing and take, taking notes. So um, even if maybe the, the topic of the course didn't line up with that, um, I, I tried to just find profs that I, I thought I would enjoy. Um, and I think too, course sign up day is one of the most stressful days of probably your life. <laughs> um, so, cause it's just, you know, it, it's just really hectic. Everybody's kind of trying to do it at the same time, but there, there's always movement and, um, there's always another year. You know, if you don't get into a course your first try, you can always try again. Um, and I think, you know, if there's a course that you really, really want to get into, well then whatever semester that's in, try and maybe register for that semester before the second one. Um, but I think if you, if you just kind of, yeah, just follow your interest and I think to don't get to caught up in what people tell you that you have to take. Um, a lot of people will say, like, so I art summered and articled at a corporate firm and I didn't take a single corporate class, um, except for one tax course. Um, so, and I did fine. <laughs> so I think, you know, you don't have to take securities law if you want to work on Bay Street. I still don't really know what a security even is. Um, you're going to be fine. And I think, you know, law school is, is long and it's expensive and it's hard. Um, so you might as well try to enjoy it as much as you can and just, yeah, just like really see what lights a fire in your belly and kind of follow that. So I guess you're, what you're saying then is for the student that thinks, oh my goodness, I need to take that course, whatever it may be, for the bar admission, would your advice be, what would your advice be to that student? My advice would be to do whatever you're comfortable with. Um, but I, again, I didn't take a single bar prep course. Um, ex well, I guess I took like the first tax course. Um, but that's because I was interested in it. And I think if you, you know, don't put yourself 
through tax if you don't want to do tax and you hate it and you hate math. Um, that's a few months of your life that you won't get back and that you're really going to struggle with. And it might not even help you. I think people, um, you know, they have an idea of what the bar exam is going to be like, and it's not like a traditional substantive law school exam, the law society will give you everything that you need. Um, though they're going to give you your full packages and they're not, you're not really engaging with the material on the exam like you would in a law school exam. So, you know, you're, I think you'll be fine. And I, I think the big, the big thing that law teaches you or law school teaches you is how to think and how to problem solve and how to learn material that you're not familiar with, because that's, it, I mean, my very small amount of experience, that's what being a lawyer is. Um, I have yet to meet a lawyer who knows literally everything about whatever area of law that they practice. Um, and you just have to get comfortable with being comfortable with that and learning how to engage with material as it comes to you. And you will get those skills from anything um, that you do in law school, whether that's a clinic or, um, you know, if you do the refugee hub or if you do some, some other extracurricular, you'll get those skills. And I, I think that's really the main thing to focus on. Great. I know our students will appreciate that. Cerise, would you, any advice, additional advice on how you uh, navigated course selection? I think I had a, I definitely had a slightly different approach to Christina. Looking back, I wish I had spent, um, had, had allowed myself to take more courses that I was really passionate in, but I, I chose to take courses where um, I thought I would want to practice in them, not necessarily things that, you know, were, and, and I, and I know there's, it's a weird distinction to make, but there was courses that you know I read the description and you know they were super interesting but I, I wasn't sure if I'd ever want to practice in those areas and so I didn't explore them instead I took classes that I thought you know would again as I mentioned before you know make me stand out or you know point to an interest in that area um, I wasn't you know I wasn't privy to the fact that you know not all firms cared about your your um your course list but so I decided to take classes that I thought would um, kind of point to an interest. Um, and when I did select those classes um, through my first year, I realized that I really did not enjoy midterm assignments and midterm anything. Um, and I loved a final exam. And so in my second and third year, I focused not just on those classes, but classes that had a final exam that I knew I could, you know, hopefully fingers crossed, excel at. Um, and those were my primary concerns when I chose my classes. Um, but I will have to echo Christina in saying that I did not spend very much time thinking about the bar exam. And I wouldn't recommend that anyone spends any time aside from the few months you spend prepping for it, thinking about the bar exam. <laughs> Law school is so much more than, you know, collective two exams that you're going to sit. And as Christina has said, no amount of, you know, class that no amount of time spent during a sem wasted during a semester thinking about the bar exam is going to serve you well. Um, so put that off and, you know, think about it in four years when it matters. Excellent advice. Great. Okay. So let's shift gears a little bit to talk about uh, community. So we are a big law school. Um, so I wondered, Cerise, how you started to find your people in, in the building or beyond during law school? Um, my people started in first year in my small group um, and it started through jokes uh, to be quite honest you know the first couple of weeks I, f I found people to be quite reserved and and maybe a little bit professional they thought they had to come to school you know in jeans with a belt um, there wasn't a lot of you know sports gear and so um, I made some of my closest friends in first year by cracking jokes in a class which you know you know, might not have been the most professional thing to do, but, you know, at the time I thought it was funny, so I did it. Um, and those people are still my friends to this day. Those are the people that ended up being in my study group. Um, and those are people that I, you know, have developed lifelong friendships with. Um, and I, I say all that to say that I was really myself in a lot of situations. And I really, um, I think, attracted those types of people because I was myself. Um, and I, I stopped worrying quite quickly about 
what was the best way to, pre to pretend to be a law student and, and try to just make genuine connections. Um, and then also in the clubs that I, I joined or the talks that I went to, UOttawa has a list, a laundry list of different lunches and lunch and learns and professors speaking. Um, and I would see people that I recognized um, from whether it was my large group or that I'd seen around and I would talk to them about, you know, the thing that we had just learned, learned, sorry, learned, I don't know, um, the, the time we had spent together, essentially. Um, and, and through those times and through those interactions and seeing people in the hallway, I think you develop a, like, a sense that the school is quite large, but can feel quite small. Um, and, and it serves me well to this day. Although yeah, I didn't I meet Christina that year, funnily enough. Sorry, Professor. I didn't meet Christina. <laughs> Where were you hiding? <laughs> At home, probably. <laughs> yeah. No, and I really think the, the authenticity piece is huge, right? Like I sometimes, when I'm in a new space, I'm asking myself, like, do I co feel comfortable here? Am I laughing at a joke because I think it's actually funny? Or am I laughing at the joke because I feel like I should? And how do I find the people with whom I am my authentic self and not the self that I think others want me to be. It's so important. And so the fact that you found those people in first year, Cerise, is a testament, I'm sure, to the jokes that you made as, you know, little bat signals into the air and the people that, that needed to see them saw them. <laughs> there were flares and signs for help during a courts <laughs> class. I was like, where are we? What is happening? <laughs> That's great. Christina, what about you? Um, luckily enough, I um, happened to meet like some of my best friends at the first lunch during orientation. We just happened to sit at a table together um, and now we're all, you know, stuck together for life. Um, but the majority of people that I met was through uh, Law Review, the Ottawa Law Review and the Ticket Defense Program and just getting involved in things. Um, I started law school a little older than most people. I think I was 29, I was 28, I think when I started. Um, and so a lot of my cohort, especially my small group, a lot of people were, were in their early 20s. Um, and so I think a lot of people, you know, and there's something for everybody, like there'll be a lot of parties and social events and things that like I had kind of gone out of that phase already in my life. Um, so I really focused on meeting people through shared interests which just manifested in the different extracurricular activities that um, I engaged in but I know that there's also um, for any other you know quote unquote mature students um, out there starting law school there is a mature students society I think um, there's you know there are people who get together around sports or there can like you know different areas of law like film law or entertainment law or whatever so there's there's so many ways that you can find people who um are interested oh the musical i know people get into the musical and like love it and meet so many amazing people um so there's so much great stuff um that you can do and 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 meet your little you ottawa family and cerise are you still in touch with uh folks that you met in law school I am outside from my uh, friends uh, from first year who we all ended up going our separate ways. Some people went on to do the the master's program with Carlton or they pursued MBAs. So we all kind of dispersed. Um, I, I was able then to kind of recreate those networks, networks like Christina mentioned through different clubs. And I am still in multiple group chats where now as junior lawyers, we air out our grievances and our woes and we ask each other for advice and we help craft emails for each other and we really are um, groups of support. Um, and Christina and I are in our own. Um, and, I, and I hope that those group chats will continue, you know, in every aspect of my life, not just, you know, my professional, my professional track of career. And what about you, Christina? Still in touch with folks? Yes, absolutely. Um, as Cerise mentioned, um, Cerise, myself and uh, the other, former editor-in-chief of the Law Review um, have a group chat <laughs> that we <laughs> still chat in. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm maid of honor in um, someone's wedding and a bridesmaid in another wedding. And both people I met um, in law school and most of the people actually that, because I, I live in Toronto now. Um, so most of the people that I know here, I know from law school and uh, we're all still really close and, and really connected. So it's been good to have that support system here um, in a new city and new job and all that kind of stuff. 
I love it. It's, you know, I, uh, in my small group, now the uh, assistant dean of students, Rachel Lack, we were in the same small group 14 years ago, and now we work together. So it's like the pitch for you never know where the people in your classes are going to, to end up. Okay, so maybe uh, last couple of questions. I wonder if we could talk a little bit about what you did after law school was over. So maybe Cerise, we'll start with you. So what have you been up to since uh, your time at UOttawa? Uh, after law school, I wrote the bar. Um, and I was, I guess, the last era of in sitting the bar exam in person, who's to say whether that will ever be a thing again. Um, and so I dedicated two months of my life to studying for that grueling exam. And then I started articling for the Ministry of Attorney General in Ontario um, at the uh, Treasury Secretariat branch, where I um, was exposed to primarily labor and employment law. Um, and I had a fantastic experience uh, and learned so much from the lawyers there and really solidified my passion for labor and employment. Um, and recently kicked off my, uh, what is hoped to be, you know, I hope to be an epic legal career um, as an employment lawyer in Toronto, <laughs> um, which, you know, is a, a, is a quite a different experience. It's, it's quite different when your name is lawyer on any paper. Um, and, and so since law school, I have kind of followed, I guess, what most would consider is a traditional path. And did you know that you wanted to be an employment lawyer, like 2016, day one, in photo hall, where you're like, I'm going to be an employer, employment lawyer. I wonder, like, how did you get there? I had no clue. I have a very strong memory of uh, a good friend of mine, Danielle, telling me that she wanted to be an employment lawyer. And I smiled and nodded because I wasn't quite sure what that was. Um, but throughout law school, I dabbled in different areas of interest. I took a few handful of business classes to see if I could, you know, you know, cut it on Bay Street. I took, um, ended up taking a labor law class and realized like that was exactly what I wanted to do. I took a cannabis law class and went on a field trip to um, uh, a Canada's leading cannabis corporation. And so I really did kind of find my way there haphazardly. Um, and through SPIs, through different internships, through just my own kind of self-study, um, I realized that that was something I wanted to stick with. Um, and I, I got there quite late. I think I got there, so I'm, I was one of the last people in my group to make a decision of where I would focus my my practice or what I would think would be in my practice. Um, and I also took a quite, a, I think, a big of a gamble to, to article into only one area. Um, but I um, luckily, I really enjoyed it. Um, and it's something I'm excited to continue to work in and learn in. Yeah, I'm still tenure called to the bar, still learning constantly. And every time you think you know an area of law, then the Supreme Court changes the test and you have to start <laughs> afresh. Uh, Christina, what have you been up to since you graduated? Uh, it's kind of similar to Cerise, obviously, I, I wrote the bar. I wrote, um, I wrote the bar in Ottawa um, and then moved. I packed up a U-Haul and drove it, um, which was, I only hit the curb once. I want to put that on the record. Um, I drove it into Toronto and then I articled at Denton's in Toronto, which was an amazing experience. Um, it was 10 months of just learning mostly tax law because that's just how it worked out. That's what I ended up in. Um, but yeah, I just got, I had the opportunity to learn from so many just really kind, brilliant, um, enthusiastic lawyers. So that was a really great great experience. Um, COVID had changed the plans that I had for myself um, for the period after articling. But yeah, the last two months, I've just kind of been taking it easy, uh, which was a really difficult thing to do. I think when you go through law school and you're so busy and then you article and you're busier than you imagined you could be, um, you know, I thought to myself, I'm never going to have this time again. So I'm going to read what I want to read and I'm going to do yoga every day and, um, and do all that. So that's been really great. Um, and I suspect by the time this uh, goes live, uh, I will have started my clerkship at the Court of Appeal for Ontario. So I'm really looking forward to that. I start that in a couple of days, um, not only just to get back to work and have something to do, but um, such a great opportunity to learn 
from some really brilliant uh, legal minds, um, not just the judges themselves, but from my peers as well. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be doing for the next 12 months. Yeah, and it's an, and it, clerking, I think, is an example of another kind of uh, activity that someone can do after law school, right, where you work closely with a judge or a set of judges to help them uh, prepare for cases, to do research, those kinds of things. So uh, really exciting opportunity awaiting and to see behind the curtain how decisions get get made. Well, Cerise and Christina, I'm both so proud of you both, and I'm proud to know you, and I can't wait to see how your brilliant legal careers unfold, and I hope you'll stay in touch, and thanks so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having us. You've been listening to an episode of the Orientation Podcast Series from the University of Ottawa Faculty of Law Common Law section. You can subscribe to the Orientation Podcast Series on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube with closed captioning, or wherever you are listening to this episode right now. If you are a first-year University of Ottawa Faculty of Law student, you can also find additional sources at the Orientation 2020 Brightspace page. Thank you for listening, and we can't wait to meet you soon. This episode has been produced by Tech Law Fellow, June Glee.